Hi guys, this is Jackie Murray with Ask a Tech Teacher. I'm your guide through these 32 lessons in the Structured Learning Technology Curriculum for fifth grade. We're on lesson 13. This is the first of three on projects that use desktop publishing. A really different approach to sharing information that a lot of your students will just love. This will be exactly how they want to do things. Newsletter, but we have a couple others we're going to cover besides the newsletter. So um, words you want to go over, desk, DTP, because desktop publishing is just way too long. Dialog box, drop cap, what's a newsletter, placeholder, these words. Discuss these with students. Make sure they understand them. Some of them they will. Some of them may be placeholder. They don't, although they've used placeholders before in PowerPoint, in slideshows. They usually have placeholders in most of the programs. So can't type on a page. This is not like Word where you click anywhere on the page, which I can. I'm not in Word, and start typing. It, it requires a text box to type in. So that will be a little different for them. It, it's exactly like um, slideshow programs, both slideshow programs. So you have to enter a box, a text box, and you type in it. So just so students understand that difference. What is the difference between save and save as? Backspace and delete, those are good. They should know these by fifth grade. Just review, but they should know them. Screen froze probably means there's a dialog box open, but it could be any number of things. But this is one that they should be aware of. Um, and mulligan rule, it will be an effect on this one. There's a lot of material in this one week. This would be a lesson you might want to stretch into two. Um, here's your assessment strategies. We, we, you can assess the newsletter. There is a rubric for that. You can also assess on these other items that are more um, anecdotal or uh, uh, just formative rather than a, a summative of their knowledge. They should bring two stories to class because they'll need it for their, their newsletter. Mm, a, a, a housekeeping item, if you're offering after-school tech help, make sure each week you verify that the students who are going to be part of that are there. Now hopefully they put their names on the class calendar, so it's easy for you to look at that and see there's two names there or there's none there or something like that and verify that. But that would be an item that they should include on the class calendar that Joe and Ivan are going to be at the after school tech help program. You're about to start speak like a geek board presentations. Well, I shouldn't say about. It's the third board. So you're going to start it after this current one you're starting today and um, keep collecting words for it. It's a really fun one. Okay, um, just find out if there's any tech problems students had they want to discuss. Sometimes this can slow your class down, but it is tech class. This is your time to spend on tech. So these are often the most valuable minutes you spend with the students because they're very authentic problems. You want to finish, you have the problem solving board finished last week, but if for some reason you didn't, you must finish it today because you're starting on Google Earth board presentations. Google Earth board is where students will pick a topic. Here's some suggestions, but you might pick topics that are places they'll visit in fifth grade, places they'll visit in sixth grade, um, historic sites that go along with a book they're reading, whatever suits you. I think these are from the wonders of the world and, and then some, just the popular, commonly known locations around the world. So they're, they're pretty vanilla, but they're a good list to start with, and they're definitely sites every student should be familiar with. So they'll pick one of these sites, they'll pick a date, and then they will share one fascinating fact about the site they picked with with their classmates. That's all they have to do. But it has to be a, a, a fascinating fact. It can't be the channel that goes underwater. That's just, you could do that without researching. So it requires it needs to show research and show that they delved into the topic for enough time to come up with something that's fascinating. Um, you have this form here students can fill out. They have one, if they have student workbooks, they have one in their workbook 
that they can fill out. Just annotate their workbook with their name, their Google Earth location, their presentation date. They also see exactly what you're going to grade them on before they even start. So they're all set up. And I have them put it on the class calendar. If you do it where it's a joint exercise where students all can go to the calendar, then they should do that. Besides putting it on here for themselves, presentation date, they should add it to the calendar today. So that is in there and everyone will know when that's due. You're probably not going to have more than three people per day. And it, they should all take two to three minutes is all this is going to take. It's speaking and listening skills just like the problem solving board was. It's going to be one sentence. My location is Egyptian pyramids. The fascinating fact I found out was yada and any questions and someone might be really excited about the pyramids and offer something they thought was exciting or ask a question. I usually limit it to three questions because students do get excited about these. Okay so those won't start today obviously but there you go. So today you're going to start the three projects in desktop publishing. A newsletter, a calendar, and a trifold. Now they've done all of these, maybe not the calendar, in the past. So you don't have to reteach this, and that's why it's allowed, it's only given one week, because this is knowledge students should have. So here's their examples. If you've been on the Structured Learning Technology curriculum, here's the trifold they did, here's the newsletter they did, and these are magazines and cards. So we don't have a calendar there, but the calendar you'll see when we get there. It's pretty darn easy. Okay. So, but before we start, you want to have a discussion about why desktop publishing. You want them to understand what it brings to the party that these other ones don't. Now, if I look in the student workbook, if you have student workbooks, here's what they'll see. It, down here, it's nice and small. They could enlarge it, of course, but you don't really want them to. You want them to see all of these. Here they are. They're over in desktop publishing. And what's its purpose? What are the basics? And then when they look down here, they'll compare what they wrote there for desktop publishing to what's for these other ones. The other, the presentations, the slideshows, word processing, spreadsheets. How, what makes desktop publishing the right choice for a newsletter where slideshow presentations wouldn't be or even word processing wouldn't be. So that's a type of conversation you want to have with them, is get them thinking about comparing and contrasting these. So when the time comes where you're not saying, okay, open your desktop publishing program and make a newsletter in it. When you're just saying, create a newsletter, they're, they're going to say, oh, what do I do that in? Or create a brochure. Oh, what do I use for that? What do you think? Evaluate what each of these productivity tools brings and which one suits your needs best. You want them able to be critical thinkers and problem solvers. So that'll take you a little bit and then discuss what a newsletter is, go through examples of it um, in short, bold names, short stories. It's always an attractive, colorful layout that pulls the reader in. Couple stories, couple pictures. These are good examples. This one's in Publisher. This one's in Google Docs, um, a template. So we'll have a newsletter template. Okay, they can also do a PowerPoint template. So you're going to, they can work in pairs or groups, pairs, because they brought two articles. And um, probably one, one page, two pages if they're working in pairs. They can do it by themselves with their two articles. And um, fill in all the spaces on the template. And here's some uh, suggestions if, if you don't have a template or you, you can't access one. Um, these are, if you have iPads, these are some really good choices for creating newsletters on iPads. Look through them and see if any of them suit your needs. Here's examples of what might be in the newsletter, but again, this is up to you. You might not have enough time to do all of these points, so you, you won't. You'll uh, limit it. This one is very short. So it's very quick and it's more of a newspaper than a newsletter, but it's kind of fun and it gets one article in there. It looks pretty cool. You have to write the title too, but this one they can probably do in about 10 minutes if your time gets that short. So here's the rubric. 
and I think, let's see if they've got it on theirs. Yep, they've got it. So they know exactly what they're supposed to cover. So they won't be surprised. It's got all of those points that they should cover. It, it, if, if there are some points that you don't feel they need to cover, just use your annotation tool and um, put an NA there. Have them put an NA or cross it out. Use a thick sentence line and cross it out for them. So if there's points that you're not going to grade, then let them not worry about it. This will take most of the class for them. Oops, I want to be back here. This will take most of the class. They're going to work together. You want a tool that will be collaborative. They could work on separate computers, work together. Some of these will do that. Some of these you're going to have, it won't, won't work that way. So you'll have to test them out and see which works for the, if you want one person typing, another person giving input, or both of them typing. Really the only thing that requires both of them typing is when they're putting their own information in. So other than that, one person designing would be fine. And I think that's it. Make sure it's all on the one page if that's what you're planned for. Print, publish, share as needed. Um, and then if you have time and they're keeping blogs, have them reflect on how this desktop publishing was the right tool for a newsletter. And compare and contrast, objectively think, use evidence. Four or five sentences, that's all they need to do. But you want them really thinking about, we're, we're not learning desktop publishing, we're learning to share knowledge by using a newsletter. Okay, make sure before they leave that they have their Google Earth Board presentation on the class calendar. So that's not a problem. And you see next week we're doing calendars. All right, guys, that's it. Now, this is a lot of information in this lesson, and I've gone over my five or eight minutes. But let me know if you have questions on this. I'm happy to jump in and help you with whatever you need. Otherwise, have a great week, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.